Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. Thank you for clicking on this video. If you're someone who enjoys that what film, how about clicking that subscribe button? Somehow I still managed to watch nine films this month. I think I did. This is terrible, you guys. I think I did a review for like three of the uh, movies that I'm gonna be talking about. So of course, like always, you can always catch my full reviews uh, down in the description box if I did review them. is the trial of the chicago seven if you saw the review you guys know i loved it um one of my favorite films of this year so of course it's going to be in the wow tier it is more of a trial based drama film there are some amazing amazing performances on here one that was really really surprising uh is sasha baron cohen which as you can tell there is another movie of his on my list as well we'll get to that here in a couple more steps here but he does absolutely amazing in this movie definitely an oscar contender for best picture screenplay actor supporting actor i mean everything about it was great um you can find that on netflix uh up next is another netflix uh movie uh the babysitter guide to monster killing or monster hunting sorry and honestly i feel like it's just for kids it was a cute enough movie would i pick this movie up again now do i recommend it not really but you do have kids and i think they're gonna enjoy it next is after we collided which is the sequel to after it is based off of a series called after which i am a fan of the book series this particular type of series is not for everybody i know that these movies get like the worst type of credibility and it's kind of like 50 shades of gray but in a way kind of like not as intense as 50 shades but there is still a lot of sex involved so it's a sexy time movie the story is not the best overall is not the greatest movie i know that the story is not the greatest i know that but i still enjoy it i really do so i'm gonna put it under enjoyable and i personally prefer this movie over the after movie i hate it i hate it the after movie because they missed so much out of it the thing that i didn't mention in my review for this movie was that the beginning part of it they do like a little montage kind of like a little recap of what did happen in the first part which i really wasn't here for i was like why would you do that so stupid but again the type of movie that is i mean i know i know before anybody tries to like come after me it's not the best type of thing the the story the relationship i know i know but fuck it i enjoyed it so moving on to another netflix movie called holiday we do go through all the holidays and not just the major holidays but like the smaller ones i thought it was a pretty i don't know if i want to put it under enjoyable or okay you know what i had a good time with it it was enjoyable to be honest with you i don't really consider it to really be a christmas movie or like the start of like the new netflix christmas movie because it's honestly like you said you go through all the freaky holidays it came out in october yes we do go through halloween in this movie as well but yeah you can literally watch it all year long if you want i mean any movie you can watch all year long if you want to watch a freaking like home alone you know in like july then you know what you watch home alone in july but yeah it was a, a, a cute enough movie i don't regret watching it if you're into chick flicks if you are into like these cheesy like rom-coms and it has a lot of really nice um comedy within it her name um arizona from Grey's anatomy comes on this movie i haven't seen her i don't think in a movie and so have i ever really seen her in a movie not that i can think of off the top of my head i just know her as arizona from freaking grace and Alex. i love that show so moving on to borat with this longest name so we're just gonna call it borat 2. i hate the first part i honestly don't even remember the first part that's how much i dislike it that's how much i dislike this character I'm really not a fan of uh sasha baron Cohen's character so we got borat we got uh bruno oh my god bruno we have uh the dictator I've seen these movies, you guys. I just, I don't like them. I don't like his humor. I, ah, uh, I love them in the trial of Chicago 7. This time around when he does come to America, people know him and they're chasing him. But before I do forget, this um, is available on Prime Video. Um, I don't know if part one is available on Prime. Do you see Coco? Is she coming out on the screen? Oh, she's not. Let me love you. I'm not gonna lie to you guys. Um, the first maybe like 10, 15 minutes of it, I really wasn't paying too much attention to it. I was actually editing. But then it just kind of kept calling my attention because all of all the ridiculousness that was happening compared to the first one i don't think it was as 
squamish i remember going like oh my god like in the first part more uh, we do follow a lot of the things that are going or happening currently right now in the u.s so this movie is definitely not going to be for everybody it does talk about politics and it does talk about trump and the presidential election and coronavirus so we get into all the nitty-gritty and then like towards the end they talk about you know what could have possibly been the outbreak of the coronavirus we could have a nice little cameo there it was okay <laughs> I, I don't really see myself rewatching this, so I'm gonna go ahead and put it under okay with a very close enjoyable, but I just cannot see myself saying that Borat was enjoyable. There is, and I think this is the reason why, because I'm gonna go ahead and let you guys like pre warn, spoiler alert, with the daughter. They're like at this debutante ball, shit, whatever, and she's on her period. They start doing some father daughter dance, and she lifts her dress up, and she. I don't know if she's wearing a patch, wearing a tampon, or, you know, she's just, like, letting it flow. Or maybe she just has, like, a heavy flow going, if you need it. But we see, like, a big, bloody mess going around. Not a care in the world, you know, and she's just parading around. It was a bloody mess. You guys know, pun intended. So, just want to pre-warn you if you have not seen the movie. Let's move on to Hubie Halloween, which is Adam Sandler's newest Netflix movie. It was good. I I enjoyed it for what it was, you guys. I know that a lot of people might have it under, like, you try or okay. I know it's not the best movie, you guys. I know this. I know this. But I honestly had a really, really good time with it. The ridiculous? Yes. Is it Adam Sandler with the weird-ass voice that's very hard to understand? Yes. Do we have his friends in this movie? Trying to get another paycheck, yes. But it's a Halloween movie, you know, that I could honestly see myself rewatching yearly from now on. I'm gonna go ahead and move on to Spontaneous. Later. So you guys, I had a meeting and I really don't remember where I left off, so we're just gonna move on to the next movie, Spontaneous. Which I think is probably where I left off, now that I think about it. Um, this one is available to rent a video on demand. It is kind of like a coming of age story, but like gory, there's comedy, there's a love story. It's it's pretty crazy. The girl from 13 Reasons Why comes on this movie. I think she's great. Honestly, the movie was really darn good. It really, really was. But basically, the seniors of this school are exploding. Like, they're uh, spontaneously exploding. <laughs> like, I don't really know how to explain it other than they literally just pop like a balloon is what she says in the trailer sorry i have like a hair just kind of bothering me here so it is very bloody and graphic in that way yeah i know that i love my little bloody graphic portions of these movies it's finding love friendship again it's a weird coming of age type of movie with like a little like twist to it so moving on to Over the Moon, which is uh, Netflix's newest animated movie. And this is a beautiful movie, you guys. Especially if you're someone who has experienced loss, you know, you losing your significant other, your child losing their parent. So this is one of those cartoons that does involve singing. So if singing is not really your thing, then this may not be your cup of tea. But they do have really, really beautiful songs. Not all of them are great. They're not all winners. So I, I, I'm going to put it under good. I don't think it was like absolutely wow but it is definitely a good movie overall i think it has a really really good message so again it does deal with loss so i know some parents are not that fond of showing their child you know about death and stuff so then you may want to shy away from this particular movie for the time being finally on the list is hbo max's uh the witches i don't know if it's a remake or sequel of the 90s witches the movie was it's another one i don't know where to put it at i'm just gonna say it's okay Oh, it might just be for kids. You know what? I'm going to put it under the for kids section. Yeah, for kids. It, I didn't really... Anne Hathaway and Octavia Spencer are fantastic. I mean, they're great actors. And they did a really good, pretty decent job in this movie, to be honest with you. But overall, it wasn't the best. And I don't know exactly what happens in the original Witches. Also, this is another one that may be a little bit too much for your child because the witches they their face just kind of like 
gets big and it gets pretty creepy. They hate children. They turn ch children into mice. But yeah, so again, you know what your child can and cannot handle. I don't really fully recommend for you guys to watch it, to be honest with you. So this is all that I saw in the month of October. Go ahead and let me know down below what you guys saw this month. What, how do you rank them? Did we watch any of the same things? Do you agree with where I put every? Well, you know what? Yeah, I'm gonna disagree where I put half of these movies at. It's okay. Everybody, you know, film is subjective and all that good stuff. We're gonna start off with the lovely little poster right behind me. I don't know if you guys caught that about two weeks ago. I changed it. The Rocky Horror Picture Show. And second would be this little fellow right here. Oh, Jack. He's just gonna be down there on the <laughs> Would uh, be from Hocus Pocus. There we go. It had like a little glare on it. And let's go ahead and move you over here to the table for the movie haul. So we're gonna start off with the Master of Disguise with Great Gatsby. I've actually never seen this movie. It is a two disc special Fight Club, which is one of my favorite movies. We got this little lovely uh, fellow right here, uh, which is a Christopher Nolan movie. I actually have not seen uh, Memento. Another one that I haven't seen before is Fast Times at Richmond High. Warrior, which I've heard so many great things about that movie. Great performance from Adam Sandler. We got the two movie collection from The Fast and the Furious. I'm actually going to be reviewing or rank reviewing and ranking the whole Fast and the Furious franchise. Then we got Predator. And and I have not seen this movie in years, you guys. So it's basically going to be like a first time watch. And then finally, the 35th anniversary Blu-ray plus digital code, Back to the Future, the trilogy. If you got, oh my God, look at that spider web is coming. It's about to come off anyway. If you guys are interested in a digital code giveaway for this movie, let me know down below. That is my mini haul for the month of October. I hope you guys enjoyed. You could of course always let me know down below what you guys picked up this month. Um, like always, before you guys click out of this video, don't forget to give it a like subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet don't forget to turn the notification bell so you'll be notified each time that i post something new till next time i'll see you guys at concessions bye